Hey everybody, excuse the messy hair um, <laughs> right before I go into the shower, but uh, I noticed that with this week where I promised I'd be coming on live to talk about becoming a vegetarian at the age of 10 and my entire experience of being vegan and all the things, I haven't been saving those lives. So I am going to just do a quick synopsis here and uh, I'm probably gonna have to re-record some of those and, and post them to my grid just so that you have them. But know that I'll create some videos and post them to my YouTube channel, Loving Your Day, as well. But if you haven't tuned in at 3 p.m. Eastern time this week, here's the scoop. So how did I become a vegetarian at the age of 10? Well, as many of you know, and some of you don't, I'm born in Ecuador, South America, and my father's from Italy, and so grew up living all over. And it was an exposure to education that I, my parents felt was really important, was to travel to places, not just read about places in books, but to go and experience cultures and to be part of the culture that might include learning about the dance that's typical, of course, the food that's typical, and the geography and, and all in the art, the, the music, all of it. And so it was about 10 years old that I already had 10 passport stamps. At the age of one, I had one. At the age of five, I already had been to five different countries and on it went. But by the age of 10, I already had a frame of reference of 10 different countries. And I had been to one too many third world country open air market. And my intuition was saying to me even before then to eat a plant-based diet. I never, when my mom would make uh, lunch and dinner and we always sat down together as a family growing up until I went away to university. I wouldn't choose the, the meat option. I would choose the, the pastas, the rice, the, the things that were not meat protein <laughs> anyway. And so that was my intuition already kicking in um, before the age of 10. But making these visits to open air markets, because my father really felt like it was important that we not just visit these beautiful art museums and, and see that part of cultures, but we also saw all of the socioeconomic conditions of a particular country and, and had exposure. But seeing the animals hanging and no longer being able to disassociate that this little piece of meat is that beautiful living animal that it came from. Like when you see the creatures, they're hanging in their natural state, your mind automatically understands not to disassociate. And I'll give you an example. I was living in Chicago in this beautiful neighborhood and it was surrounded by children, which I love. And they used to always see me practicing yoga in the back deck and they'd come over and they always want to talk to me as I'm Miss Sylvia. And we were having a little lunch break in our backyards with a bunch of kids and, and they were like four, five, six years old and they were eating chicken McNuggets. <laughs> Nothing again against the chicken McNugget per se. But I said, innocently, uh, I said, do you know where those come from? <laughs> and they're like, yes, Miss Sylvia, we know where chicken McNuggets come from. And they named the, the uh, place that the parents had bought them from. And I'm like, no, no, no. Like, do you know where chicken McNuggets come from? you know, where do they originally come from? And they just had no idea, no idea. And so finally I was like, chickens, you know, and then who's seen a chicken? And out of this little group, not many of them had actually ever seen a live chicken. They'd seen like maybe a couple of them, like a little cartoons, but they'd never actually been around a live chicken, which is really interesting because in Bali, where I've lived, you know, half year for the last 10 years until last year, um, 
there's chickens everywhere all the time. I mean, like, it's just, <laughs> I'm walking down the street, chickens are walking down the street, like, and, uh, and same in Costa Rica, where I choose to go and teach every August for the month. So, uh, like, this is just very normal for me, but it was really wild to think that most of these little children had never seen an actual chicken. And they couldn't connect the Chicken McNugget to the chicken. Um, needless to say, a couple of the parents called me later <laughs> because I had made this connection, but I was doing so just completely innocently. I, I really didn't have um, any political agenda as I'm practicing yoga outside on a sunny day and the kids are coming over to share their lunch. Um, but that's what I think happens so often for a lot of us growing up is we may not know where things come from. Like the the cow, the chicken, the goat, the like the pig. And when you see them, then like that's just a completely different concept of understanding um, the sacrifice that's going on from that, that beautiful creature that's just one of our animal people, right? And so I connect the dots and I just could not manage the suffering anymore. And I intuited at that point that if I eat something that has had suffering and I put that inside me, that's going to create a feeling inside me because I've always been, um, on the healing path. I've always been clairsentient, clairvoyant, um, and, uh, and highly sensitive, intuitive empath. Like I've always been that way since, you know, the earliest was like maybe four years old. I remember having mystical experiences and knowing that in the practice of animism, that I'm not more important than that tree. I'm not more important than that goat. I, that, everything is all interrelated and equal. And, and so I connected the dots and I just couldn't take that suffering into my body and, and digest that suffering. It was just too much. Like, uh, I literally would start shaking like at the thought of it. And I'm actually still like that, like that now. Um, it, it's, it's something that is so deeply embedded in me as to why as a little 10 year old child, I wouldn't want to see something suffer to feed me and why I wouldn't want to take in the pain of that little creature and ingest it and put it inside me. Um, I just understood and that was it. And kudos to my parents who were like, okay, <laughs> There was not one single discussion, argument, uh, effort on their part to convince me to do something different or that not once did they take a stand of like, oh, this is just a phase, you know, you'll get over it. Or why don't you just try a little? There was no pushing. That was just, okay. I collected the data points. I knew myself and you know, and so be it. And clearly I, I wasn't starving <laughs> from a plant-based diet. And we had a very middle, uh, Mediterranean diet as well. Cause my father's Italian. So <laughs> there was always pasta, you know, um, and, and a lot of vegetables. My mom is an amazing, amazing cook, but, uh, but that was really the beginning. And it was years later that I had a teacher in Chicago teaching for me and she was a practicing Buddhist and we were sitting together and discussing um, the paramitas and the Buddhist principles and what have you. And, and we were talking about like, why or wh why not eat fast food and why or why not eat meat protein from a fast food place. And she said from her understanding of the Buddhist teachings that she said to me, have you ever seen a happy employee at like, you know, quote unquote, big, typical fast food place that makes hamburgers? And I said, no, 
I haven't. They often seem like really stressed out and there's such intensity and like, you know, and, and there's all this like energy that feels aggro and, and um, so no, I, I haven't seen that. And, uh, and she said, well, it's not even only so much the, the animal person that, that is there being sacrificed, but it's also the energy of those that are preparing the food, the energy of what that animal felt um, at its death. It's the energy of how it's being prepared. And, you know, there's many traditions in the world that honor the animal spirits and the sacrifice. And then that's a, a very different thing. And I'll go into that in, um, another time. But that stayed with me. And I had a teacher in university who had fought at the Vietnam War. And, uh, and he became a vegetarian after he had fought in the war. And I, and I asked him why, you know, like, uh, cause you know, I'd already been a vegetarian at that point. I was 18. And so it was like, you know, already like eight years. And he said that that experience of going to war and all of the aggression and the hormonal effect and like, just, he had contributed to creating that aggression in order to, to protect himself in a situation. But he spent then all the years after purifying himself and purifying his body and his energy state to not have that any aggression inside him. And that included eating anything that had been in a state of suffering and, and that like fight and fear that was in that animal spirit, you know, at the time of its demise. So that was really interesting as well, connecting the dots backwards, right? You know, this like a uh, Buddhist friend, a yoga teacher, a university professor, like all the way to 10 years old. And, um, but that was, you know, it just continued to contribute to the why of, I made the decision and, and there was no change in my mind. It wasn't like um, I was battling with a decision. It was as natural as breathing. Like, okay, I'm not gonna hold my breath anymore. Good idea. And therefore I'll continue. Um, I should brush my teeth every day. All right, so be it. Like, I'm not going to eat meat protein and not contribute to the suffering of other creatures. All right, so be it. And that was it. It, it wasn't um, anything long drawn out or philosophical quandary that I was in or some sort of angst. It just never was. It just was as it should be for me. Um, then in university, I became at that time ovo lacto vegetarian because the terms have changed <laughs> over the years. And that meant that I wasn't eating any dairy or any eggs. What now today we would probably say is vegan. And so my first experience um, of being like vegan, because I was only eating plants and there was nothing else. There was no like dairy, no eggs, no, um, no honey, no anything. So I started to become vegan in university and then I tried that out and, uh, and it worked it worked well for me. It worked, uh, you know, my brain still felt really strong and accurate. My energy level still felt, you know, really, uh, active. And, and then I went on from there. And then, um, later on, there were times like when I was in uh, a hit and run at the age of 25 as a pedestrian that, my brain was in recovery it was the first TBI traumatic brain injury that I experienced and, you know, um, grade three level concussion. And, you know, I don't know if you know this, but our brain takes up most of the caloric intake of the food that we ingest. So at that point, um, I needed a little bit more protein for my body. You know, it was just again, intuitive. And I brought back in um, 
uh, eggs and, and, and some dairy at that point. Um, and it, it just was, again, it was not a big decision. Like, should I, shouldn't I like, you know, weighing out on a bar graph, you know, all the pros and cons. It was just, I'm in a state of recovery. My body is just saying, this is what it needs. <laughs> and so be it. And that's, that's, uh, how that happened to be. So I went from vegetarian eight years to then the uh, vegan in university and then um, a little past university at that age of 25, then going back to vegetarian. But vegan vegetarian are sometimes tough labels for me to wear because, uh, you know, I don't want to represent an entire group of people. Um, but what I'll always say is that I'm on a plant-based diet and I have a plant-based starter kit. If you want to learn more about eating a plant-based diet, then I have a little free course, like an intro course in my Teachable University. I have a little starter kit, PDF, that's awesome. You know, so just, you know, private message me and let me know and, and I'll send you the links and you'll have that. But then, I went back to eating a, what we would call vegan diet after the recovery. And, uh, and, and then I went in and out in a fluid way of vegan, vegetarian, vegan, vegetarian through my, like, uh, you know, from t through my thirties and, and, you know, I let it be that depending on what I was going on in my life and what I needed and what my, um, what I felt like was, uh, was good for me, but, um, but for certain, I have always been, um, a non meat eater since I was a little girl at the age of 10. And, and it has made a huge difference to my energy, to the way I look, the way I feel, the way I show up in the world. You know, I like to explain when especially children ask me, um, you know, what am I eating? You know, I'll just explain that I'm on a peace diet and children just get that. It's like, okay, <laughs> all right. You know, Miss Sylvia just wants to be peaceful and happy. And I'm like, yes, that's exactly it. And I want you to be peaceful and happy. And I want all the living creatures all around us to be peaceful and happy. And that that's the diet that I'm on. Um, and if you're new to this, then there's all sorts of political reasons reasons that um, related to sustainability, eco reasons to consider, if not eliminating meat from your diet, reducing. And so you could do a, you know, meat free Monday and see how you feel, see how you feel energetically. Think about the association. Do you feel more aggressive when you've eaten something? different than when you've eaten something else. Do you feel more tired? Do you feel more lethargic? Do you feel um, like you eat and then you're hungry again? Uh, you know, what is the emotional impact of the nutrition that you take into your, into your soul, into your body? And that's equally as important as everything else. So, you know, if you want to try, to reduce your uh, footprint on this earth. If you want to try being on a mission of peace, then maybe just make the effort for one day a week or one month a year to eat a plant-based diet. And don't believe me, don't believe all the books, don't believe all the articles take the experiment, collect your own data points and feel it for yourself. Notice how your heart feels, how your soul feels, how your energy feels. And, and then from the experience, 
make the best decision and the next best decision and the next best decision for yourself. Um, but truly, just like I did when I was a little girl at 10, we would all do so much better if we simply paid attention to our intuition, trusted our intuition, and ate more intuitively. So with that, I'll leave you here tonight, but um, thank you again, excuse the dirty hair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go shower now, but, uh, but thank you so much for listening to part of my journey and any help that I can offer you, please let me know. I'm happy to inform and look for the next videos or the videos that I'll post on YouTube about tips, techniques, and how to, to move towards more plant-based eating along with recipes and all of that. It's so delicious. It's so fulfilling. It's an amazing way to to contribute to the peace in the world and from my heart to your heart to the heart of the universe may everything that you do be a way to show yourself that you love yourself love your day and love your life peace everybody peace peace